Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions and they say gold is money and everything else is credit. Well, that saying has held ground through all kind of markets uncertainty over the years. And when it comes to uncertainty, 2022 certainly has been full of it. Generally, a war along with fears of either a recession that succeeds a still ongoing pandemic bodes well for gold prices gains. However, unlike previous years, we haven't seen the market take cover from uncertainty in gold. Luckily, the silver lining in the story of gold this year is that the support is now picking up. This comes as Street believes that economy is stuck between an inflation and a recession. A rise in global central banks and investment buying are expected to further push gold prices higher. So with the first trash gold sovereign bonds opening up subscription, is it time for you to bet on yellow metal? And what other factors are in play here? Joining me now to take that discussion and more is JGPC's Colin Shah, Chirag Shed, the principal consultant of South Asia at Metal Focus. Also joining us is Chirag Mehta, the chief investment officer at Quantum Asset Management. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And well, yes, there have been various factors which could have actually supported gold prices even higher. While we did see an all time high in gold, that was the first one actually to surge up between the asset classes. But since that all time high, we we haven't really been able to match the kind of performance that we have seen in other asset classes. This one is to you, Mr. Chirag Shet. What is your sense? Would you say it has been a bit of a disappointing performance that we've seen in gold until now? Chirag, you're on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, I think what is happening in gold is that it is now looking at multiple factors which are actually playing out. So at one side, you've got geopolitics, you know, and on the other side, you've got, you know, macroeconomics uh, issues which are there. So uh, while, you know, gold did actually see a good run be, uh, on the back of geopolitical crisis in Russia and Ukraine, I think the street is now more worried about what is going to happen on the inflation side, whether, uh, you know, Fed will continue to raise interest rate aggressively. And if that continues to overpower the narrative and the discourse, then you will see, you know, gold continue to remain under pressure. Hmm. What's your sense, Colin? Because the kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, performance that we've seen come in for gold with more safe haven buying actually going in for the dollar index rather than gold and the kind of run up that we've seen in equities. How do you look at the whole performance? Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, uh, like you mentioned earlier, inflation, you know, fears of uh, a recession coming in the next uh, maybe couple of quarters but what we are seeing at least on the jewelry side uh, april and may exports have been very strong actually on the gold jewelry side we've seen 50 uh, percent growth compared to last year and uh, overall a 20 percent growth in just the month of may hmm. so in spite of uh, say you know our overall fears that things should slow down what we are seeing, at least from January to May, is uh, extreme strength in uh, exports. And uh, we, we are cautiously optimistic that, at least on the jewelry side, because of all the reasons mentioned, uh, inflation, fear of the war, you know, all these things, there is a gold buying happening globally, whether it is uh, India, the Gulf region, US, or even China for that matter. So we are seeing uh, strength, at least on the jewelry front. So, Colin, what you're saying is that the prices may not have risen, but the demand definitely continues to be strong, and especially in the jewellery sector. Yes, yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, Chirag Mehta, we have seen strong gains when it comes to ETF as well and that trend really began in 2020 and we've seen it follow through last year and much of this year as well. What is your sense? Have the prices on the weaker side supported, encouraged investment in ETFs? Yeah, sure, Manisha, it has certainly. If you look at 2020, we saw a strong demand coming in given the uncertainties of COVID. Uh, 2021, when risk assets started moving higher, we saw some lull in demand. Now, again, this year, when we have, for different reasons, uncertainty starting to come and uh, volatility in equity markets persisting, we are seeing, again, good buying happening on the ETF front. So if you were to look at the flows, uh, uh, last couple of months, we've seen again started seeing strong flows coming in. For example, in March, we saw 205 crores of net inflows, followed by 1,100 crores of net inflows in April and 203 crores in May. A net net this year, YTD itself, 2022, we have seen 809 crores of net inflows come in. And this is even supported by even stronger number of people joining the gold bandwagon through the ETF route. 
We have seen about uh, 12 lakh 97 thousand new investors come in gold ETF. It's just YTD. In the last one year, it's more than double of that, about uh, 28 lakh investors coming in gold ETF. So we're seeing strong momentum especially when uncertainty rises, the flows kind of increase significantly. That's the trend that we've seen. And given that uncertainty because of inflation, because of macroeconomic risk likely to persist, uh, I think the momentum or the flows in gold ETS will likely be higher. All right. So whether it is jewelry or ETF, we have seen the numbers continue to be very supportive. Uh, Chirag Shet, what is your sense when you look at overall investment? Metal Focus recently has come out with a report as well where the expectations are that the investment demand may just about continue. And you've come out with various geographies as well. So where do you see a better investment demand come in? How do you look at the Indian numbers going forward for 2022? I think, uh, you know, one thing which is interesting is that the, if prices continues to probably face a bit of pressure, that augurs well for, uh, you know, physical demand, uh, you know, globally, because there is a certain amount of, as, as Colin pointed out, you know, the lower prices actually helps jewelry demand. So we believe that, you know, most of the key physical markets like India, China will continue to see strong demand on the jewelry side, whereas the Western markets will continue to do very well on the investment side. I think, uh, you know, as as we discussed earlier, there is this fear about inflation, stagflation, uh, or you know, recession concerns, whatever you put it. Uh, so that will lead to you know a bit of uh, safe haven buying and in, continue into gold, uh, you know, throughout uh, 2022. Okay, so the demand is expected to be on the stronger side here, and also, uh, Chirag, when you look at physical demand versus paper gold demand, which seems to be doing better right now and going forward, is are there any trends that you're picking up? I think in India, uh, as such, uh, you know, physical market continues to remain, you know, fairly large. Uh, you know, however, uh, you know, I'll say that, uh, you know, paper uh, paper demand has been very, very strong, especially uh, over the last two years. You look at uh, sovereign gold bond, we've seen very strong inflows into sovereign gold bond. Even for that matter, in ETFs, uh, we've seen strong flow. So uh, both these are in India compared to physical market are still smaller, but I think we've seen new age customers actually coming into both these markets. Mm. You know, uh, Chirag Mehta, this question is to you. In the last few months, uh, I especially have heard a lot of people tell me that look at equity markets and the kind of returns that we've seen there, and gold hasn't performed as well. And there has been this conversation about perhaps decreasing holdings of gold in their portfolio. I mean, the last couple of weeks clearly have turned that around with the kind of sell-off that we've seen in equities and currencies as well. And gold more or less holding around those levels of its highs, though. What is your sense on how gold is relatively playing to other asset classes and what should be a holding in portfolio? So I think uh, gold's likely having the last laugh and it's the one man standing still when other assets are falling significantly this year. So if you look at equities, if you look at the likes with which gold was compared earlier, like the bitcoins, uh, all have slumped this year as gold is still in the positive territory. So that really tells you that, you know, a time and again, when there is uncertainty, when there is volatility, gold does well, and this time is no different. So I think uh, from a portfolio perspective, we will see higher allocation rather than reduced allocation to gold. Uh, even in multi-asset funds, we have seen that, you know, uh, for whichever allocate to gold, they have kind of upped their allocations to gold. So that really gives a signal to the investors that if fund managers are seeing something uh, as supportive in form of gold, uh, of course, they should also kind of look at that and increase their allocation. So, so I think uh, each crisis teaches investors a lesson. Uh, we saw that after 2008 financial crisis. We saw that after the taper tantrums of 2013. We saw it after the COVID crisis that allocations have increased. I think this bout of uh, uncertainty or volatility in uh, risk assets is going to likely linger for some more time and that will bring in new set of investors or investors having more conviction to an allocation to gold. Oh, so we'll you see increased allocation to gold. I think it's still very, very under allocated mm -hmm. and that allocation has to inch up. So since you spoke about allocation, Shidag, what is the kind of growth that we've seen year on year basis and uh, uh, what are we looking at? I mean, has it changed over the years? So yes, uh, earlier it was a very minuscule portion of the portfolios from an investment perspective. Mm. Uh, maybe jewelry was something very separate where people used to allocate a higher chunk. But when they started looking in the portfolio context, it was uh, nearly half percent, one percent or less than two percent earlier. We have now seen investment advisors also recommend five to ten percent allocation to gold. So slowly investors are building that portfolio allocation. 
and with kind of episodes like COVID or any other volatility episode that teaches them a lesson, yes, this does help. And therefore, they kind of uh, get uh, convinced by the argument that we need to inch it up over the 5 to 10% of the portfolio. Uh, we, in our studies, have seen hard numbers tell us that between 10 to 15% allocation to gold, it does not diminish overall uh, portfolio returns. It kind of enhances a bit and reduces the risk significantly. So there are hard numbers backing up that argument of 10 to 15% allocation. And I think investors are moving slowly moving towards that kind of numbers. Fair point. And I do take your sense about the volatility because there were years and years when we saw minimal uh, uh, you know, volatility in case of gold prices. But $100, $150 in matter of a week now really seems to be a, a new normal. Call it this one is to you. With the kind of volatility that we have seen in case of gold, one, do you see that continuing? And two, when people are buying jewelry, does that uh, deter them with the kind of volatile moves that we are seeing in markets? So to be honest, uh, the way at least... Uh, the psychology works uh, while buying jewelry. Uh, mostly what we've seen uh, over the years is that whenever there is a slight dip, uh, customers you know, drive uh, more to the stores. So there is a increased uh, walk-in at all stores, whether it's the US, uh, the Gulf or India, when there is a dip. So some amount of volatility, I shouldn't be saying this, but is maybe good for our business because uh, on every drop, you see uh, customers buying more then there is some amount of steadfastness, you know, when the rates uh, steady. But uh, again, when there is a drop, you know, usually there is more buying. So we uh, generally the trade uh, always uh, praise that there are these uh, small drops, especially during the festive season. Oh, because well, there is increased buying at that time. So yes, there is that amount of price sensitivity, as is in case of other asset classes as well, and more so when people are buying jewelry, because uh, you know when you're buying other asset classes, it perhaps is an investor, but when you're buying jewelry, it is the whole household that looks at the gold prices also. Chirag Shed, this question is to you. You know, for the longest time, we've seen gold as a safe haven and as an inflation hedge as well. This time, there is a bit of a disarray that we've seen within that relationship. How have you seen over the years the relation between inflation and gold? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's an actually an interesting one. You know, we often look at a lot of these ratios. We look at a lot of, you know, correlations. And, you know, every few years, you know, these correlations get broken down. So while, yes, you know, gold as inflation hedge has always been, you know, pushed out, but we've not seen gold actually perform in that sense. And I think uh, that's what I was, uh, you know, talking about, that there is probably now fear in the market is that in order to control inflation, uh, the, the hike in interest rate would be much faster and I think probably that is something that gold is, uh, you know, uh, against. Because if the if the uh, central banks of the world, be it the Fed, the BOJ, the ECB, or even RBI becomes far more aggressive, then the real yields, especially in U.S. terms, become, uh, you know, certainly positive. And that's I would say, is the biggest nemesis for gold. Sure is. All right, gentlemen, on that note, uh, we will take a break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we will talk about the price you forecast for the gold going forward. So even if you should be buying gold and there is volatility and there is uh, markets uh, wanting it to have it on your portfolio, what is the price view really from here on? And the other point we'll discuss is the best way of buying gold after this break. Welcome back. And even as we have been showing you that chart on how the gold prices have continued to rise most of the years in sense of returns to you. But the gold price forecast for this year really seems difficult. There's a report from Stancy which says that $1,750 per ounce by fourth quarter is what you can perhaps see. An HSBC report says that 1820 is an average that they're looking at for the first half and below 1800 by fourth quarter. Stonex says that it's a good buying level below 1800 for the gold prices. And Credit Suisse says that a fall below 17 87 for gold can open way for further downside in case of gold prices and mind you note too that nobody really mentions $1,900 per ounce as a sustainable level for gold in this year. Colin to you first what's your sense on where are the gold prices headed and why? See what we've seen historically is a 5% dollar term return if you look at it you know over a 10 20 year prism and I do expect, uh, and you know, we are no astrologers, but uh, with a 
looming inflation, uh, you know, with uh, all the talk that we are hearing on recession, gold continues to be a safe haven. And uh, we do expect that there will be strong jewelry buying and ETF buying like what, what we've seen, you know, during the first half of the year to continue during the second half of the year. So guesstimates are that it won't drop below the 1800 level. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, we'll be looking at an upside of 5 to 7% uh, come Diwali in dollar terms. And then you'll have the rupee, I guess, uh, you know, uh, depreciation of 3 to 5%, which we see every year. It's already depreciated in the last uh, few months. So in, in rupee terms, the investors in India should see a decent uh, return. So when it comes to jewelry buying, I, I don't see any way down for at least uh, our, uh, the end consumer, the customers at least for jewelry. Well, yes, uh, every year when you look at those charts, the, the, the returns in dollar terms are lower than in various other currencies, whether it's euro or Indian rupee or Australian dollar for that matter, because these country, these currencies rather have seen a depreciation there. Chirag Shet, I remember talking to you earlier as well, and you clearly have been a bear on gold prices for most part of this year. What's your sense on the second half of this year now? Well, so we con we continue to remain, uh, I would say, a bit bearish on gold prices, and I would I would not put this as a bear. I think there are two important things to understand. I think if you're looking at gold gold right now in 2022 purely from a returns point of view, then this is not the right time. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at portfolio diversification, then gold would still give you a very good portfolio diversification, given what is happening in the other asset classes. So I think, and you know, investor will have to look at it. You know how he is looking at gold market at this moment. Uh, we believe that, you know, why, yes, there are inflation concerns, there's geopolitical crisis. Uh, however, the interest rate uh, scenario is what is the most crucial. And we believe that fundamentals at this moment do not warrant higher prices. We are looking at, you know, 17 50, 17, below 1700 kind of levels by end of this year or early next year. Well, absolutely. When you look at the first half of this year, most of the equity markets which were making highs have all turned double-digit negative, but not gold. We're not even 1% weaker right now when you look at YTD returns in case of gold. So even as it may not have outperformed, it definitely has given that stability in your portfolio there. Chirag Mehta, the same question to you. What's your sense on where the gold prices are headed by Diwali by end of this year? So if you look at uh, what we are seeing in gold market is a mix of factors influencing gold. At one end, we have all the macroeconomic risk and geopolitical worries. Uh, at the same time, we have central bank uh, starting with the U.S. Uh, tightening monetary policies. So given that U.S. is at the forefront of that aggressive tightness, we have seen that dollar strengthen significantly as compared to its counterparts like the Japanese yen or the euro, and that is yielding much pressure on gold as well. So uh, we think that uh, for the short term, uh, we will stay in the same kind of environment. So gold prices will remain ra range bound with a upward bias, I would say, as opposed to uh, downward uh, pressure. Downsides will clearly be limited in gold. And uh, if there is potentially because of growth worries, any U-turn in policies taken by the central banks today, because they are posturing a very aggressive stance and they kind of become a little bit dovish because of pressures on economy, then probably we'll see a big repricing in gold. So in the short to medium term, uh, like six months or so, we will stay range bound. Uh, but if there is any, for any reason, change in stance from monetary authorities, then probably we are headed much higher. So uh, having a gold position in your portfolio will uh, help support portfolio and bring stability. Plus, uh, with an upward bias, that will help you, you know, uh, make returns if things were to turn really sour. So, so have an allocation to gold, and I think it counts, especially during this time. All right, point taken. So you should have a portfolio uh, which has gold in it. But let me come to each one of you and also understand on what is the best way of buying gold here. As you all have said that, yes, India ranks high when it comes to jewelry buying. But when you talk about investment and having it in your portfolio, we still are under allocated here. So Colin, uh, you know, I, I know jewelry is your topic here, but if you had to make it or rank it into one, two and three, whether it's about jewelry, physical buying, ETF, sovereign gold bonds, or the digital gold and the e-gold, which also seem to be picking up right now, how would you rank your top three? Uh, top three, so you're asking a jeweler. So it's always <laughs> a jewelry as the top one, followed by ETF and then maybe, uh, you know, e-buying also. Hmm. But coming to the jewelry side, and I'll just take a minute here because uh, for your viewers, that maybe this is very interesting. 
that generally when you buy gold in india you're not paying more than 5 to 10% as making charges hmm. considering we are seeing a 5% dollar term return and then you know a 5% rupee devaluation every year you're looking at a 8 to 10% appreciation in your gold investment every year so even if you're buying jewelry and you're enjoying wearing the jewelry to your uh, you know weddings parties wherever you wear your jewelry uh, you're basically recovering i guess the making charges only in the first 12 months and then every year you have appreciation on a beautiful piece of jewelry that you may buy for yourself or your wife or mother so i would rank jewelry as number 1 for that simple reason all right oh well yes and let's not just put it on women and mothers and wives there because men have a lot of jewelry accessories now available as well so well yes that's another way of investing there chirag shet what is your sense how would you rank the three Yes, I I would actually look at it, Manisha. Uh, you know, according to your motive or objective. You know, if you want to have an investment which you can flaunt it, you want to wear it, then go in for jewelry. You know, if you are looking at an investment that you want to buy today and probably convert into jewelry at a later date, then probably go in for you know bars and coins. However, if you are purely looking at price appreciation, more from a trading point of view, then probably. ETF sovereign gold bond or digital wood so uh, i would say each investment avenue has got a different motive now you need to probably look at where you fit oh well yes absolutely within gold as well there are so many ways of diversifying your portfolio within gold also and especially with hallmarking now come through i think the transparency and the and the kind of uh, uh, openness uh, more regular market uh, regulated market that we are seeing clearly helps chirag mehta final question to you yeah i think uh... i think that's a trend that we are seeing slowly increase uh, we are seeing that uh, investors need to uh, bifurcate between what is for consumption and what is for investment and we are slowly seeing that trend emerge and that buying behavior happen uh, going uh, going the right direction so people are taking that active call in terms of when it's consumption jewelry is the choice they don't have any other option but when it comes to investment i think it has to be through more efficient forms of buying gold Uh, like the gold ETFs or the sovereign gold bond, etc., uh, and and we are seeing that demarcation take place really clearly, especially post COVID, where buying was influenced, or many people get got in touch with these efficient forms of buying gold, and we are seeing that they move in that direction uh, very clearly. So I think uh, uh, that is where investors need to say that you know when it comes to investment, I'll I'll go through these efficient routes. and there are advantages over and above that apart from being price efficient you don't have to worry about storage uh, no worry about the purity of the gold it's fully insured the fund house takes care of it and it's very very convenient you can buy gold sitting at your house so and and and, and the most important thing is accessible 24 by 7 if you want to buy it you want to sell it even uh, at any point in time you can liquidate your holdings yeah. so from that perspective i think uh, uh, it has to be bifurcated and we are seeing that trend slowly emerge Uh, totally yes so the gold prices may not run up and may not be at all time highs yet again in this year but the demand is expected to be continue on the stronger side we already have seen those numbers come in whether it's about imports jewelry buying investment buying all of that continues to hold strong when it comes to gold gentlemen thank you so much for joining us and talking that 360 degrees about gold demand purchases and prices there with that it's a wrap on this edition of commodity champions thank you for watching